My name is Catherine Constantinides and it was approximately just over five years ago that I became aware of the situation of Western Sahara, a situation that has been a conflict for more than 40, so, sorry, for more than four decades, a little over 43 years. And it's a situation that I was horrified to find out about because as a South African and somebody who's com who comes from a country that has a long struggle for freedom and liberation, this is a, still something that has been kept under great wraps. The Moroccan regime has kept <coughs> Western Sahara under a black, a black curtain for these past 43 years. And when I found out about the illegal occupation of Western Sahara since 1975, and when I went to stay with the Sahrawi refugees just outside of Tindouf in Algeria, I realized on my way home that I now have a responsibility to these people. A responsibility to ensure that I use my platforms and I use my voice to give voice to those that have been forgotten, not only by Africa, but by the world. The struggle for self-determination is one that should be of great concern to all of us. A referendum was promised in 1991 by the United Nations when a ceasefire was called for between the armed struggle of Morocco, Western Sahara and Mauritania. But still, nearly 28 years later, the Sahrawi people have still not received the referendum that was promised within a six month period of that ceasefire taking place. I work actively on the ground in the refugee camps and I'm specifically focused on the humanitarian crisis that exists there. But I'm also very aware and constantly learn of stories of torture and horrific violations happening in the occupied territory of Western Sahara. Mm -hmm. Where Sahrawi people are not allowed to even claim that they're Sahrawi. They're forced to speak French, they're forced to not speak with their own dialect. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed to claim who they are and they are persecuted and tortured up until this very moment. There are endless stories of Sahrawi people that are sitting on bogus charges in Moroccan jails, very far away from their homes. In the refugee camps where I work, there's a humanitarian crisis because the world is forgotten. There is aid that goes to these Sahrawi refugees, but because this is not a focus area, aid is limited. And so, food aid, water, and all of these basic necessities are under great constraint. The Sahrawi refugees still live in a very, very difficult circumstance. Climatically, they're living in an unlivable land in the middle of the Sahara Desert. They still do not have access to sanitation. Water is trucked in, and their water then lies in a plastic lilo in the sun where chemicals leach into that water that they then have to drink because there's no other access to any water. The Sahrawi people are suffering a great deal. In the refugee camps where they are luckily safe, their brothers and sisters who are in the occupied territory are faced with torture, beating. Women and children are beaten on a daily basis. If they go to the roads and they hold their flag, they claim they are Sahrawi, they protest in a peaceful manner, they suffer the consequences of that. The political will to change the status quo on the issue and conflicts of Western Sahara has not been there. Because Morocco plays proxy to France on our continent. And there's been no political will to change the status quo because everyone's quite comfortable. The Sahrawi people have been peaceful and therefore, blood has not been spilt in this region. That would destabilize again our continent in a way that is really, really something we need to avoid. Yet, the Sahrawi people need to be given focus, attention, and they need to be on the top of the agenda. Mm -hmm. In recent months, we have seen great developments take place here in the United Nations. But still, we need to give voice to, the, to this situation on a daily basis. Not only when there are big meetings taking place, but outside of those big meetings. In between UN human rights sessions, we need to be talking about 
the issue of Western Sahara, the violation of the human rights of the people of Western Sahara. The political world doesn't change because those that benefit are those that hold the power. Mm -hmm. The natural resources in Western Sahara are rich. The biggest deposit of landmine, sorry, the biggest deposit of, of phosphates and the reason that Morocco holds the claim to this land is very evident. And that illegal trading of these phosphates is taking place against what has been called for by international law and by courts here in Europe. But still, trading takes place with Morocco, but with produce that comes from Western Sahara. During the 1980s, Morocco decided to further, during the armed conflict, further divide the Sahrawi people. Those that fled and looked for refuge in the only place that was open to them to move to was in the Algerian border, outside of Tindouf, where the temporary refugee camp was set up. And I say temporary, and I keep on highlighting the word temporary, because 43 years later, they are still in these temporary refugee camps. Mm -hmm. The Sahrawi people have been left in 1975. They have not been able to advance. They have not been able to access their basic human rights. They have not been able to move forward with the world. The global world that we know, many Sahrawi refugees don't know anything outside of that very desert that they have to call home. Under harsh climatic conditions, in a Saharan tent that they live in each and every day. The Sahrawi children don't know that there is a world outside of that refugee camp. To further divide families, the Moroccans built a wall. The wall is also known as the wall of shame, the berm. It is the second longest wall in the world. It is 2,700 kilometers long and on either side of it between 5 to 10 million landmines were planted, active still today. And the suffering of the Sahrawi people because of those landmines is horrifying. This still takes place on our watch and Morocco will not allow for landmine action to take place in the occupied territory. Third parties and organizations are not allowed to access, assess or clear those landmines. And Sahrawis are maimed by accidents that happen in the desert. And to live as a refugee is one thing, but to live in a re as a refugee in a refugee camp with no limbs, it's completely another thing altogether. The pain of the Sahrawi people and their suffering <coughs> is immense. This wall has not only divided people and does not allow Sahrawis to cross and move over, but there are families who have not seen other family members for more than four decades. There are so many injustices taking place in this region of the world. <coughs> there is so much inhumane behavior that continues to take place and it's happening on our watch. Now more than ever we have access to information. We don't know what we don't know, but we have the ability to go and to research for ourselves. Don't just listen to what we say today. Go and do your own homework, mm -hmm. research, talk to people, mm -hmm. bring up Western Sahara when you're around a table, when you're meeting informally with family or friends over a weekend. Let us start to create a groundswell where people start to speak about something that has been kept under wraps. Kept under wraps because there are few that are benefiting from the economic wells that should have been there to benefit an economy for the people of Western Sahara, mm -hmm. not of an occupying power. Not only are they an occupying power, but they are also colonizing the territory. Many Moroccans are given great incentives to go and live in Western Sahara. Homes, bursaries, job opportunities, mm -hmm. and stipends on top of that. All of this, so when the referendum is called for, Moroccans outnumber Sahrawis, as well as other people that they are infiltrating into that area. 
But on our watch, knowing what we know, we cannot rest. Because as a South African, and I believe that many of you with a conscience would understand where I come from when I say that my freedom is not a freedom if the Sahrawi people are still not yet free. Nelson Mandela visited this territory. He visited the Polisario in the Sahrawi refugee camps. And he stated that when we received our independence, the Sahrawi would also receive theirs. This promise to them has still not been fulfilled. And as a South African activist on human rights, I will not rest until this happens. Because an injustice is taking place. International law stands on the same side as the Sahrawi people. Even though the human beings have not actioned the political world to change what is going on. But the small wins will see us win the war. But we need people on the ground who continually make sure that Western Sahara and the conflict and the inhumane happenings in the occupied territory are front and center of discussion. And as I say, not only in these forums, but more importantly outside of them. We have a responsibility to address the injustices. 43 years later, this cannot be the case any longer. We cannot rest. And we must make sure that in our own corners, we put the correct pressure where it needs to be. So that in our lifetime, and in my lifetime, my Sahrawi children will return home. We all deserve to have a place that we can call home, our rightful home. And the Sahrawi people have been denied that for far too long. Thank you. Thank you very much. We look at the